The reason why initially we were invited was this innovating pedagogy report. At the Open University, every year, we basically try to predict what's going to be the future in pedagogy. And one of the th things we predicted in the future would be this analytics of emotions. And I guess that's why we're all here and why we're all very excited. But the thing about the future is it's also very important to look at the past. So what I would like you to do now, and I'm going to show you a very interesting clip of 1999. And they basically, a researcher asked participants, do you want to use a mobile phone? And what I want you to do is to basically watch the movie. It's a short clip of one minute. And think about your kind of emotions that you're experiencing while watching this movie. Um, so enjoy. Heeft u een mobiele telefoon? Nee, nee, nee. Waarom niet? Nou, dat heb ik niet nodig, want uh, ik word toch niet uh, gebeld of zo. Heeft u een uh, mobiele telefoon? Nee hoor, heb ik niet. Waarom heeft u er geen? Nou, ik zie er niet van in. Dan ben je op de fiets en dan word je gebeld. <laughs> Vindt u het belangrijk om altijd bereikbaar te zijn? Ook niet. <laughs> ik ben niet zo belangrijk. <laughs> ik heb een gewone telefoon, waarvoor moet ik een mobiel hebben? Dat is handig. Maar als ik ergens strand dan is er ook altijd ergens wel een telefoon zelf, een boerderij met een boer met een telefoon. Ik heb al een antwoordapparaat, dus thuis ben ik altijd al bereikbaar. Of moet ik dien dan terug te bellen als er is gebeld, maar ook nog eens uh, onderweg als ik in de trein zit of in de auto gebeld worden of zelf kunnen bellen vind ik niet nodig. Het lijkt me helemaal niet leuk om elk, altijd bereikbaar te zijn. Ik ben student en uh, ik heb een antwoordapparaat en dat is prima. We hebben het jaren zo gedaan en ik vind het wel goed zo. Ik heb een buzzwoordje voor hoog, uh, hoog nodige problemen, denk ik. Maar ik hoef niet uh, continu zo'n piepding uh, op een terrasje te hebben en zo. Als mensen mij bereiken willen, dan kunnen ze dat met een brief doen. En uh, is het dringend, dan ben ik telefonisch thuis te bereiken. Ja, ik, ik weet nu al dat ik hem overal aan liggen heb. Dus ik laat hem vallen. Ik ben ook gelukkig zonder. Oké. Okay. So is hier een mobiele oh. telefoon? So, she, the last person is happy even without a mobile phone. This is really hard to imagine, right? 1999, which is 16 years ago, right? So, what kind of emotions were you experiencing when watching this clip? Did you experience high energy? Did you experience low energy? Did you, were you enthusiastic about it, happy? Or were you slightly more nervous or upset or perhaps even slightly depressed. Just shout the kind of emotions that you were experiencing while watching this, this clip. Anyone? Sad. Sad. Mm -hmm. any, any, anyone else? Nostalgic. Nostalgic. This like, wow, the good old days where people just write a letter to you if they want to contact you. Relax. Relax, yeah. I mean, we had to turn off our phones while we're coming here and everyone is probably in one hour just quickly grabbing their phones because God knows what we might have missed. Any, anything else? Amused. Amused, yes. How is this possible 15 years ago? Imagine in 15 years' time, everyone will wear a Fitbit to measure our emotions. Everyone is like, what, you're not wearing your Fitbit today? What, what is wrong with you? So the reason why I've chosen this movie is, first of all, it's interesting. But secondly, I think even if you don't speak Dutch, you probably will get the gist of the argument of that a person is making. So let's have a look. So the first person, do you have a mobile phone? What kind of emotion was this person expressing? Just shout out if you, if you, if you remember that person and kind of the emotion. The, yeah, why would I want to have a mobile phone? That's ridiculous. Any, any, anything else? Yeah, what? You want to have a mobile phone? Why would you? Let's, let's look at this one. This one is a typical Dutch woman with a child uh, on the back on the bicycle, just cycling. Imagine this, that you know you would be cycling along and suddenly your mobile phone would run out. That would be ridiculous. So what kind of emotion was she, was she expressing? Horror. Horror, yeah. Very much here or in a way also, well, nervous perhaps, right? Anything, anything else? Yeah, the interview is ridiculous. Why are you asking this? Okay, what about uh, this gen lovely gentleman? What, what emotions did he experience? Loneliness. Loneliness, yes. 
He was like, I'm not important. And, you know, the, the important bankers, they have a mobile phone, but I'm, I'm just a normal person. Why would I want to have a mobile phone? What about this one? It's an amazing, I mean, if you would probably film her now, she continues, she would be on a mobile phone. <laughs> I don't like the idea of being available all the time. What kind of emotion was she expressing? Yeah, an invasion, invasion. It was like depressed, fatigue. Oh, that would be like terrible if that would happen, right? So, except I guess for Katie, none of you speaks Dutch, right? So it's amazing. Even if you don't speak a language, you can still, there's still key emotional reactions just by very short clips. So imagine what we can do with actually monitoring real people that are able to speak our language. So. What we're trying to do today is saying that the technology to measure emotions, in a way our eyes, is already in our hands, our mobile phones. Our computers in front of us can already really accurately measure our emotions. Did you know this? So there are fantastic websites, and I'm hoping that Jessica is going to tweet a couple of those examples. Is you can just go to websites and just watch a particular advertisement, in this case about an M&M advertisement. And just by watching this clip, it can predict the kind of person you are and it can predict exactly when you're going to smile, what kind of attention you have at a particular point in time and whether you're actually enjoying that particular video. So the technology is already in place to do this right here, right now, because everyone has a mobile phone and everyone has a computer with a webcam on it. So this is, this is really, really exciting, right? More importantly, we have new tools available as well. We have Google Glasses. Some of you are wearing heart belts or some of you are wearing Fitbits. So in a way, not only by just looking at where people are looking in terms of their eye tracking or whether they're breathing or not, there are loads of tools currently already available that can measure this. So. It's not something that seems very far away. It's something that is very close by. So at the Open University, what we've been doing the last two to three years, we've actually looked at how are students actually learning. And what we have found was that the way our teachers are designing our fantastic course at the Open University influences what our students are doing. So if you have lots of materials that you have to read, in a course, you will engage with those materials in a particular way. If you have to talk to people because you're using Twitter, you're using discussion forums, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you will probably behave in a particular way which is slightly different. And our research seems to indicate a kind, kind of interesting tension that if courses are designed in a particular way that is lots of reading, our students love this, right? But if they have to do a lot in terms of lots of communication, lots of discussions, lots of wiki stuff, in a way what we're doing now, you're very quiet. I can't imagine that you're not thinking at the same time. Um, in a way, students don't seem to like that, but our best predictor for getting students eventually over the line is whether students are communicating with each other and whether students have to work together in these small groups, but communication with other people is a little bit awkward sometimes, especially in online environments. So how can we use the power of measuring our emotions, our gut feelings when we're actually interacting with other people online? What can we do to help students who are not so comfortable um, discussing online? So there are, in a way, tremendous opportunities for us to improve our education. We can understand when students are watching our fantastic course materials. We can actually see using webcams where they get lost, where they are puzzled, huh? why I don't understand to watch this particular video. We can also, by continuously monitoring what students are saying, for example, in discussion forums, I feel overwhelmed, I have a headache by re watching these movies. We can start to, pr to collect all that data to measure our, what our students are feeling. And we can even get to a situation where we provide automatic feedback to our students based on what students are doing in terms of emotions. Oh, maybe you could, you know, just take a breath, relax. I know there's a woman raising her hand with one minute, but just relax because this is important, right? At the same time, there are tremendous challenges. First of all, there are m tremendous ethical 
implications. If you continuously are monitored with your Fitbit or you continuously have to share your webcam materials while you're sitting on a beach learning the materials on your iPad, is that, is that the way that the Open University wants to go? I'm really looking forward to your discussions afterwards. How do we deal with differences? Some of, some of us are very expressive like me, yeah, let's go for it, while others are slightly more hmm, reserved. So can we actually measure different people's behaviors? And also, well, people are different in terms of their culture. So it's really exciting. But what is even more exciting is the introduction of the next speaker. So the next speaker will talk, uh, Dr. Anna Asnar, is where do these emotions come from? Where, when kids are young, they learn emotions, but in a way they also learn how to regulate those emotions. So I'm really looking forward to hear more from Anna Asnar. Thank you. Thank you.